Okay. You want to repeat that? <laughs> yeah, no problem. Welcome, everybody. We're starting the meeting at 532, calling meeting to order. I'll go ahead and hand it over to Mr. G if you want to share your screen and go through the, well, maybe not. I don't know how much you shared, just maybe the budget transfer sheet when we get there. Go through the accounts. Yeah, I can share. Uh, I might have to allow that. Hold on, let me see. Okay, try it now. Okay. Mm. You disabled me. Try it again. It wasn't clear which one I was clicking. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wanted to show Amelia. That's what happens to you when you live in Alaska. <laughs> oh, no, Alaska is such a beautiful place, you know? It like, is. I do want to go there at some point. Hold on. I got to make you guys bigger here. Um, who, who are we looking at? <laughs> I'm, I'm the tall guy, and that's my best friend up there. You That is not you on the right. That's me on the right. I swear to God. <laughs> Okay, there we go. That's better. Hold on. Uh, okay, let me let me get out of this craziness. Can you see that now? Yep. Yeah. Okay. You probably got to make it bigger though. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. Maybe a little bit too big. Good. That's good. Okay. Let me put some stuff in the eyes here. Okay. This is internal accounts. Uh, as you can see, we have. A nice balance of seven hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars in that, but I would think probably four hundred thousand of that is stuff that we shouldn't touch. Not that we we can't touch, but you know, like I said, I was talking to the facilities. Um, I was talking to Miss Raguso in facilities, and she was saying, "Do we have money for uh, facilities this year, and how much?" Now we're going to charge three hundred dollars to everybody uh, for, for fees and, and that's supposed to go towards all online learning, which it will, but it did not say I could not use existing funds in here for other things. So I'm hoping that $300,000 can go to replenish a lot of the funds that we're gonna use because this is really a golden opportunity for us to, 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 to get a lot of stuff done. So I think we might be able to pull anywhere from 300 to maybe $350,000 out of this budget an ear market for facilities. Normally, we are we are constrained by two weeks in the summertime that we're trying to get everything done, or we're constrained by the end of the year like we've been doing. Like, hey, by the way, we can't get these contracts, so you know what? Let's just buy a crap load of computers like we've been doing. Well, we don't need any more computers right now. We're, we have enough computers for a long time. So um, I'm gonna say in this in this meeting that we need, I'm gonna need to go through this budget and see where we can pluck some money in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just scroll down a little bit so you can kind of see some of the areas we could probably pull some money out. Right here, I have building lease income. Um, can you see the 15,000? Question mark before you go further. Yeah. When yes. you say that the money has to go toward online learning, what are those costs exactly that we're referring to? Well, if you got the fee letter, it was, I had to gear everything towards online learning. So. Um, I poured it, put it onto additional computers if we needed to buy additional computers. Um, I think we're going to have some, some lost computers, some damaged computers. When we originally did, you know, when they said the computer loaner program, I was kind of naive. I was thinking we might, you know, I was thinking everybody has a computer at home and, and everybody's got internet. Um, so I was naive on that. What I was not counting on is the fact that, say, Ms. Keeling is home. And she has to stay home too, um, and but she's got three kids staying home, and they all need computers. A lot of places, you know, a lot of a lot of our families don't have a computer for everyone. A lot of them kind of have that one sitting in the kitchen uh, that they use, and you know, it's all different families. Some families are fortunate enough that you know, my daughter had like a command center in her room. She had a computer, a laptop, her phone, an iPad. You know, but some people aren't that lucky. So we've loaned out, I think, close to a thousand computers. So. Um, I believe we're going to have some damage on that. We also have some subscriptions. If you have you guys have seen, we we um, we've got that Albert I O uh, that cost twelve thousand. Um, 
the other teachers are asking for everything and, and I'm not even being, I'm not even being nearly as prudent as I should be. I'm kind of like, we got the money. If you think you can use it right now, let's get it for you. Okay. Now at the end of the year, we'll decide like how many people actually did use this because now we're going to go back to normal now. And, um, and we're going to have to tighten the belt a little bit. But right now, if, if teachers feel they can, they can move it, like a lot of teachers wanted Pear Deck, so we got that, but that was like 8,000. So a lot of stuff like that. Um, uh, normal stuff like Naviance, we use Naviance every year. We have Avid IB uh, fees that we have to pay every year. So uh, are, are we going to use the $300? Probably not. But again, you know, we, if we can... You know, like I was on the phone this morning with someone and she's like, my son doesn't need a computer. Why does he have to pay fees? And I said, well, understand that the people that the kids that went before you paid fees that your son is using or going to use. Like we used fees for the auditorium. We used fees for to fix up bleachers and scoreboards and and stuff like that. So it's kind of like a, like you're kind of giving back to the school. So but anyway, that three hundred thousand dollars, I don't plan on touching any of it for internal stuff that we want to do because I don't want to get in trouble. If that's what they said, use it for, okay, I'll use it for. But this money we should be able to use because they didn't say anything about you can't use internal accounts for anything else. Okay. And again, like I told the last thing, whoever said you can't use fees for only online learning has, has never been in a school. That, that's, that irritates me. You've never been in a school. You have no idea how, how to run a school that you need to fix things up, that things don't magically stay the same. And so um, I think we should use some of this. So um, so yes, I'll go down. You can see I can kind of skim a little off building, lease, income. Um, these are our departments. I haven't put any money in there yet, but I want to wait for the fees to get it. So anyway, I'm, we're charging 300. Normally, we get half of our of our of our parents get free and reduced lunch. It might be 51 percent. It might be 52. We'll just go just go half. So 2,000 people are not going to have to pay uh, internal uh, uh, and. Uh, fees. Okay. So that's 2000, but hopefully there's 2000 that will now out of that 2000, I'm expecting at least half the 2000 to just pet buck up right away and pay 300. Yeah. This is a great deal. I'm getting a tap education for a dollar 80 a day. This is the best deal in the world. Um, and I think we'll get half the $300 right away for a thousand kids. That's $300,000. So that should float us all year long as far as the uh, uh, expenses go. And then if we get any more of that, we'll probably get it on the tail end when, when the kids maybe are our, our, uh, our seniors. Right now, we probably have a million dollars out there in debt that's owed to us by current without even putting the $300 on right now. People owe us money. Uh, we'll lose a lot of that because a lot of people stiff us at the end uh, for whatever reason. They're poor and they just some people just say, I don't think I need to pay and whatever. But, uh, but we should be getting some of that money back. So right now, we're, we're pretty liquid in here. So, so going down a couple of big accounts that we could probably be mooch off of a little bit. Um, you know, I got school uniforms in here. I got gym uniforms, $37,000. So um, I could probably take a little bit off of that right now because we still have inventory in there. When the kids come back, we'll get a new order. Uh, but again, the kids will be buying that stuff. So that's kind of $37,000 that's kind of out there right now. If I wanted to or we wanted to, I could take all that. But I'm, I'm saying don't take all of it. Um, student field trips, $10,000, um, going down, um, there's some other big ones here. Vending machine commissions, we got $10,000 in there. Um, replacement IDs, $20,000. That's all liquid income that we could probably pull a lot of this stuff out. Instructional fees is 218. That's really our, our savings account. So we can pull some of that out right now and it, it, it wouldn't hurt us because we're going to have it be replenished uh, soon. Um, going down, uh, yearbook, $42,000. We're going to uh, pay that today. I think we got to pay $44,000 on that. Uh, but we'll be getting more money uh, for that. Homecoming, we got $37,000 in homecoming. It's a shame because I don't even, I, I just, right now, I can't even envision us ever having a homecoming again. And that's kind of sad. I mean, think about that was, the, that was the event. And when you go on websites, and they, and they ask kids like uh, great schools, like what's the best thing about Taft? Like homecoming is always number one. And we worked so hard to get it like that. And, and now um, AP tests, we're probably gonna get some of that money back because uh, 
I could take some of that because CPS paid for a lot of the AP fees at the end of the year. Um, what else going down? TAF donations, we have $22,000 in TAF donations. So there, there's some money that I can, I can pull out of here. Um, so uh, in internal accounts, we're pretty healthy right now in, in the bottom line. Questions on internal accounts? Uh, Amelia, are you there? Where's Amelia at? She's there. Amelia, can you hear me? Sorry, yeah. Okay, Hello. now I've, I've shared these documents with you because you're on the LSC, but let's try to keep these as confidential as you can, okay? Because if this, and, and anybody, anybody that has like a club or a sport can come in and say, Mr. G, how much money do I have? Or I need some more money. But if you share this with people, there, there could be some hard feelings, okay? Like how come, you know, they got this amount of money, you know, how come International Night has 8,000 and yet they charge money at their events and stuff like that. So this is kind of confidential. Although if anybody really wants this information, they can always come to me and ask me, okay? Yeah, so, I'm not so, gonna share the information. Okay, no please. And, that, and, that, yeah. and I wanted to say that, but I think you already know that you're, you're smart. Yeah, you're I wouldn't share more. it. You're gonna be going to Alaska, so I know you're good. <laughs> okay. Um, Mark, Mr. Wilson had a question in the chat. Hold on. Do we want, how do you want to work questions? Do you want to do questions at the end or as we go along? Go ahead and take this one because it's relating to internal accounts. Okay, let me, uh, let me see the chat. He's asking if the, the checking the overall balance um, and the instructional fees, they both decreased by um, $120,000. Yes, that's, that's what the credit is. So we, we brought in $35,000 and we had $121,000 go out. Mr. Wilson, you want to unmute yourself and ask if you have something relating to that? Uh, sorry, um, it just, the other one was showing as a debit on the instructional fees uh, and then showed a decrease in the ending balance. So it was just uh, something that caught my eye. I wasn't sure if it, if I was reading it wrong or or what. No, no, you're not. You, when you when you look at, you go to the top. It, this is this is one of those things in accounting, Brian. And, and and you know what? You're asking the same question I asked six years ago. Um, so great minds think alike, I think. But uh, it's different from the top because the top is treated like a. Um, like accounting and the other one's treated like your like your um, checking your checkbook. So on the top here, when you're talking about the checking account, it's just the opposite. Credits mean credits. But when you're going on the opposite side over here to instructional fees, yeah, okay. it actually, it actually ending, lowers the fees. Yeah. Just the ending balance on both went down by that amount, even though uh, you know, the, they were offset in the ledger uh, between the debit and the credit. Yeah, I understand, but they're opposite numbers um, okay. as far as what they, you know, it's like in accounting, a debit means one thing, in your checkbook, it means another thing. So that's why they're the opposite. Okay, okay. thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so any other questions on, on internal accounts? All right, let me go back here. Let's go to... Uh, Uh, let's go to budgets. Okay, the first one is, uh, we can all see it still, right? Should I make it bigger? Yes, make it bigger. A little, a little bit more. Okay. How's that? That's good. Okay, it says my internet cable is, is I, may, I may kick out on you, I'm not sure. But right now, as you look at our account, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. 
So we have 685,115 funds. And just to re uh, remember, uh, tell everybody, remember we get 5877, I believe, or it might be 5785 for every kid that we get in the school. So most of that goes, I think 95 or 98% of that goes towards salaries, but there's always a little bit left over right now. So right now we have $685,000 in it. But when you go up here to the very top, you'll notice we can't really spend that. We can't spend that 250, 246, the one in bold, because those are for substitutes uh, that can't be touched. Every, every teacher is allotted uh, one substitute for seven days a year. So that money goes in there. And then also the $42,000 uh, for um, supplies. And then we also have uh, uh, the $11,000 for substitute salaries. And that would be uh, in um, uh, CIWP positions that we have. So if you really look at it, we're down to about, uh, about $400,000 right now. Um, of that $400,000, we needed um, 15.2s. So that kind of got all sucked up into the, the vacuum. We just put it in there. Uh, p uh, teachers were either over their schedules. Uh, or, you know, we, we uh, needed to open new classes. So anytime a teacher teaches six periods, um, they get a 0.2, which is 2% of their gross salary. So sometimes it, it really dings us, um, uh, but that's by, con by, that's by contract. Um, and then we do have, uh, we are going to put some stipends in there. I, I took away some of the point twos from our department chairs on some of those smaller departments. Uh, and so now they teach a full schedule, like our core classes, the four core classes, uh, they all get a period off, um, as their compensation to help us out. But the larger or the smaller ones, like, like drama and art and, uh, a couple other ones, they get a stipend instead of the $25,000 it would cost us. They get like ten or $12,000. Healthy in here. We, uh, we should be getting some more money back uh, soon. What happens, uh, just to kind of refresh everybody's memory, we hired 33 new teachers this year. Um, and a lot of, some of those teachers, like I think five or six of them, were from positions of faculty members that had retired. And when they retired, they're usually, their, their exposure to us financially are usually around $130,000 for a veteran teacher. And then we will replace them with usually a teacher that costs us about $100,000. Now, Amelia, that's not their salary, but they would be making, say a new teacher starts off making around $57,000. And then the, the rest is usually uh, their benefits. So they're making like 90,000. I don't want you to walk out of here and say, oh, these teachers, are, they're, they're not. A lot goes to benefits, okay? And it's, it's all obviously um, money well spent. But so what I'm saying is when you replace a veteran teacher with a, with a brand new teacher, which we, we did a lot of this year, you get a little bit of that money back and it comes usually in October. So we should be getting a little bit more money back. So in essence, we really don't have a lot of money in here to spend right now. Um, we just kind of have to wait uh, because I got, I'm still getting some kids that are that are registering right now, um, so we got to see how many point twos we need. So we're healthy. We're not. I don't have to give back money like we did like five years ago. We had to give seven hundred thousand dollars back. Um, right now we're healthy, and, and that's about it. So any questions on one fifteen funds? And just to remember, one fifteen funds are also CIWP funds. They merged them last year. Questions? Beautiful. Let's go on the bottom tab. I'm going to go to 124 funds, which are special income. This is a kind of a little baby account we've got here. We got about $9,000 in there. Uh, so uh, again, baby money, we'll, we'll, we'll get maybe 20 or $30,000 put in there throughout the year from CPS for special programs. So any, any questions on these funds? Okay, let me move on. Else we have. You want to go through the budget transfers? Yeah, let me do that one. Um, okay. A little bigger. Yeah. Hope I'm going small. Okay. Okay. Well. The first ones are, are 
Amelia, for the principal to spend money, they 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 let me spend money up to ten thousand dollars. So I can I can write a check without approval for nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Although usually when it's up there that much, I usually let everybody know anyway. I'm, I'm not like trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. But anytime you're over ten thousand dollars, you have to bring it to the LSC for approval. Okay, so these are some of our big ones. So the first one is the physical therapy. The uh, that's our uh, our uh, um, Who's, our, who's the people that show up at, at games and they're like taking care of people? I can't think of them right now. The physical um, therapists, the trainers. Yes, thank, yes physical therapists. Because um, it says right there, physical therapy. So um, <laughs> um, I, I, this was on the agenda last, last month, if you remember. And I said, time out, because I thought this was from spring. And I'm like, I'm not paying $18,000 and we didn't have any sports. Well, what I found out is this $18,000, we pay three times a year because we have two physical therapists, one for freshman academy, one for, um, that's a huge cat, um, one for uh, freshman and one for varsity. So it's in three times an $18,000 payment. We paid for the fall last year. This $18,000 is, is for the winter time. So we really should pay this because they did help us. And so this is, this is one that we owe. As far as the springtime, I'm not paying one for the springtime. Um, even if they build us, I'm going to say no because we didn't do anything. Um, and what I'm told is that CPS is right now negotiating with ATI uh, as far as um, what we're going to pay them. Um, from what I understand, I believe we had contracts signed. And so if AT A ATI really wants to press, the, the press it, I mean, CPS might have to pay. But I think CPS is a uh, big stick is that they're going to be okay you do that we'll find somebody else to use instead of you going forward so i think they're going to cps is going to wheel and deal here and, and take care of it and ati is going to go along with it but the, the bottom line is we're not going to have a spring payment on that so that's good but we need to pay our winter payment next one is yearbook forty four thousand dollars and as you saw in the internal accounts we have forty two thousand in there uh but that's that's normal uh we usually go a little bit negative in there because we still have a bunch of uh yearbooks especially with the covid that kit that people haven't picked up or um, that people still want to purchase. We always buy extra ones because uh, at the end here, everybody realizes they should have bought it or I lost the deadline, can I still buy them? So, so we'll, 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 we'll make up that difference. The next one is what Pat talked about, the sprinkler system uh, and oversight on, uh, on our end. Um, but again, when we, when we opened the sophomore academy uh, in Edison Park, um, oh, I shouldn't have said that. I'm, I'm really sorry, I shouldn't have said that. So. I'm just, I'm just starting a bad rumor. Um, but when you start a new school, we, we should have looked at the contract and, but who's looking at sprinklers, right? So Pat said, we have eight sprinklers. They only gave us the stuff for four sprinklers. So we need $13,000 so we can water the entire field. Uh, that's $13,000. And the other one is that tractor, which is $22,000. Um, I even asked him, I said, is there a way that we can move a tractor from the varsity over there and save a little money? And he just, you know, um, it, it wasn't um, it wasn't in our best interest to use a, an old tractor at the freshman academy. We might as well just buck up, get a good one, uh, get our custodians one that's going to run all the time. Uh, and again, that's for sidewalks. So those are the big ones. Questions on any of the four uh, budget approvals? Okay. Uh, going down uh, here, we've got um, some budget transfers. We always have to get LSC approval, no matter what the budget transfer is, Amelia. So um, the first one is $5,000, and we need to purchase some uh, school supplies. You'll see that a couple of times uh, with the budget supplies here. Um, second one was the, a $400 seminar fee. One of our teachers took a, a seminar online. I don't know which one it was, but I, I trust that it was a good one. And then they also paid $200 uh, for the fee, so we reimbursed. Um, that uh, employee. So we had to move those funds. Uh, subscription fee uh, for something online that we needed, and, and that may be for IB or MYP, but again, it's not a lot of money. I could find out for you, but it didn't seem like the end of the world, just a $5,000 transfer. Um, again, we got $5,000 for school supplies. I think one was for varsity, one was for freshman academy. Uh, the next one was what you approved last year or last year. Uh, uh, meeting was for Newsla, um, Newzella, I'm sorry, Newzella, and that was $12,000. Um, next one, instructional materials. That one was for uh, human geography. We needed to purchase some extra uh, books 
for human geography. Uh, and then the $8,000 for school supplies, again, stocking up on stuff. Any questions on these at all, ladies or men? It was a suggestion by the, uh, the PPLC that we make a special account um, in our internal accounts and call it uh, sub uh, software subscriptions uh, so we can have a little bit more accounting on what software we're using, which I think is a good idea because then next year we actually know, because I want to get, uh, I want to take a survey with my staff and say, okay, who, who actually used no red ink? Okay. And if it's only, you know, a small portion of our, our staff, I'm not saying we're not going to do it, but we'd have to really look at it. Um, and who's using Newzella and who's using uh, um, um, Albert IO and st or any of the ones we buy, uh, uh, Pear Deck. Um, you know, are we going to use Pear Deck now that we come back to school? So not a bad idea. Uh, Mr. Charles, it takes a little bit of time to start a new account. So any uh, questions on this? All right, super duper. We're rolling along here. Um, and then... I think that's it, and it's six o'clock. Any any questions at all? Anything from the PPLC? Mr. Wilson, I'm not sure if you're still involved with that. I can't see that. Uh, I'm here, but uh, I don't think we had anything aside from that recommendation to create the uh, online or the, the remote learn, I'm not, whatever the, the digital learning bucket was our recommendation. And it's, again, it's not a bucket, it would be an internal account. Right, well, yeah. I know, same thing. Yeah. Um, do we still only have two social workers? That was yeah. one of the items we talked about last time. Yeah, hey, Mary. Yes. Any interest in adding an additional one or any other positions you're looking to hire? Right now, um, right now, my focus is on special ed, diverse learners. We started the school. Um, the, the problem is CPS is not familiar with the Taft animal that we are. Schools are losing kids and we're the only ones that seem to be gaining this many kids. I mean, we gained 400 kids from last year. That's, that's a whole nother school. I mean, the average school in CPS is 600. And, and now we're gonna be close to 4,000. So you think about it, we are six times uh, larger than, than a normal school. And so when we tell them we're increasing 400, they don't believe us. So we have to really go to bat as far as giving money. So we got the internal accounts. They actually believed us. So we're gonna, we told them we'd end the, the day at 39.42. And right now we're right around 39.50. So we're right there. We, we, we kind of know what we're doing. But what they never believe us on is the special ed and the diverse learners. Um, and that, and that to their, to their um, credit, I, I understand where they're coming from because we can't prove that a bunch of diverse learners are gonna show up at our school. Well, we know kids are gonna show up, but we can tell them that our normal percentage of diverse learners is gonna be 18%. So you do the numbers, 18% of 400, and they kind of have to wait until they're actually in the door because they never really believe us. So we got, um, Ms. Hess is, is unbelievable. She's, she's, she's like a pit bull um, when it comes to like this. Um, we we were received four new DL teachers um, on Sunday before we opened school on Tuesday. Okay, Sunday night we received them. So again, we have to interview, we have to vet them, we have to um, you know, call their references. So we finally got those. Now we needed, um, we needed an additional six more, uh, believe it or not. So about two weeks ago, she put the paperwork in and what you have to do is you have to show them the master schedule and you have to say, listen, this is what we need. And so they went through and it takes a week or two. In the meantime, I'm like, you know what? It's the fifth week of school guys. And, and you know what? I don't like messing with my diverse learners because sometimes you can change a kid's schedule and it's a pain in the butt. And, some, and when you change a diverse learning schedule, it's life altering sometimes. They get attached to a teacher and sometimes you have to make these moves and it's not always the best interest of the kid. But anyway, we, we asked for six, they gave us four. And then we went back to them because they said, well, Miss Murrow can teach classes. And then we had to go back and say, Miss Murrow is a caseworker. So please review it again. So, um, 
<coughs> again, I, I feel I have people, I'm dealing with people that have never worked in a high school. They, a lot of them work in grammar school since five out of six schools are grammar schools and none of them have ever worked in a school this big. So it's kind of a learning curve for some people. So right now uh, I'm waiting for two additional diverse learner teachers. So to answer your question, yes, we need another social worker. Um, right now the, the priority is to get a diverse learner in here first and then take care of all the point twos. Um, I am still uh, constrained by the teacher contract uh, as far as the number goes. Um, the contract states uh, that classes like a core class uh, is generally 28, uh, but could go up to 34. Um, at 35, it triggers like an automatic uh, grievance thing. Uh, and then their en entire schedule can only go up 13 total and not 14. So we're trying to lower number numbers. Right now, we just gave Miss Niece a class and it lowered uh, Mr. Pildes, Mr. Walsh, and I believe one other history teacher down below. They were all like at 158, 159. So now they're, they're, uh, they're doing that again. So again, uh, a long-winded thing, but right now I got to make sure all my classes are covered before we can even look at that. Yeah, and, and you know what? Yeah, so come on now. We got a social worker for every 2,000 kids. <laughs> I mean, you know, something's not right here. It's, it's not right. I have a question. Okay, who's talking, Gorin? Yeah, Gorin. Uh, so just just to, you know, a 400 uh, student spike, which was unexpected. What do you attribute that spike to? I, it wasn't it wasn't unexpected, uh, Gorin. It was unexpected in the fact that it came so early. Um, I expected that spike over the next year. Uh, like I expected that number to come, like 200 and then 200, um, for the next two years. Um, so what, what do you attribute that early spike to? Uh, we're good. Um, we have a good brand out there. Uh, people don't see, um, I think somewhere along the line, I believe this conversation took place in class in, in people's live and people's kitchen tables. You know, I, 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 I talk about the old conversation where people on the Northwest side used to say, I'll work three damn jobs before I'm sending you to that place. That doesn't take place, but this conversation, I'm pretty sure, took place. Why am I going to spend fifteen thousand dollars or eighteen thousand yeah, yeah. dollars yeah. a year so that you can learn from your bedroom with your pajamas on when I can go to TAP and get a comparable education? Although they don't think it's better, but I can prove that it's better. But even a comparable uh, education for three hundred dollars a year, and I think some people now we may lose them at the end of this year, but I kind of think. Uh, we won't because once they're here, the kids are going to be, you know, they're going to be, hey, tap's kind of cool. And once they walk around, so that's what it is going. I think we, we doubled what I expected. I expected, actually, I expected a 200 increase for three years in a row. Um, and we'll, we'll, we will, I believe, even out at 4150, 4200 at the most. And that will be what we're going to be at as far as saturation goes, unless they keep adding. 200 unit apartment buildings in our in our neighborhoods and I don't know what to do that, but uh, that's what it's attributed to going. So we are just going back to square one where we were square one. four to five years ago with being over capacity yet again mm -hmm. and it is unbelievable that Dispenza and whoever else was an advocate of this freshman academy all right that we're, we're going to go back to square one. They, yeah. This is exactly why no one has faith in the system. Downtown, Dispenza especially, and anybody else that was a proponent of his plan. And that I'd like to address for the record in this, this budget committee meeting. Yeah, I think if you go back, I think the only alternative that, that was on the table for them was for us to get rid of NJROTC, Get rid of the academic. Hold on. Get rid of the academic center, and then and then uh, decrease our boundaries. Okay, that would have been the only three things that they really could have done. And and, and again, I know that by the numbers we're going to be overcrowded, Gordon. But you know what? With the numbers comes opportunities. And and I'm not just saying like, like a politician, but we get to offer all these sports and all these clubs and everything. And again. 95% of the day, these kids are in a class with 28 to 32 kids 
uh, for 95% of the day. Understand that, that that, that overcapacity number is a teacher that's in their classroom five periods a day, and then nobody else goes in their classroom the other three. That's how that number is calculated, okay? Understand that. We were working at, we had school at 3,600 for a year, and that was awful. No doubt about it. You didn't really realize it until they're gone. But we're going to cap out at the, at the varsity campus at 3,000, and I think that's doable. 3,000, if anybody uh, wants any, anybody at the varsity campus that was there a while understands that the 3,000 <coughs> is like the two weeks at the end of school when all the seniors are gone. So again, the numbers, yes. Okay, numbers, are we overcrowded? Yes. But again, 95% of the day, Gordon, they're in a class with 28 kids, just like they are at Notre Dame, Res, any school in CPS, they're in a school, they're in a classroom with 28, 32 kids. So what was the alternative? I mean, you, you keep bringing that up for me, but what was the alternative to do? Let me know what you would have done because I'm, I'm interested. I would, have give, I would have made the Dunning building bigger and given them their own high school, right? Yes, okay. we have sports. Yes, we have clubs at the cost of academics. That's how I look at it, right? Okay. That's all. Okay, I understand. Thanks, Thank Gordon. Um, can we transition? Can you talk a little bit about um, hybrid learning and where we're going with that? <laughs> what kind of costs you see coming that way if that's the direction we go? Um, you know, staffing wise, or are we going to have to make a lot of or any changes? If no, recall. I don't. I don't see, Chrissy. I don't see, um, I, Mrs. Stride. I'm sorry. I don't see hybrid learning increasing anything with our with our uh, with our money at all. We don't need to hire more teachers. Um, you know, we're we're fine. Once we get staff, we're going to be fine. It's not going to cost us any more money one way or the other. My fear is that when we're back in the building, things will start to happen. Right now, nothing's happening there, and we feel like we have these extra funds. And then we come back to the building and I'm wondering if then we'll see other things come up. Like what would, yeah, and my fear would be um, the only way we kind of um, get hurt would be if we come back in November and, and the only thing that's really going to hurt us is sports because on internal accounts, sports takes the biggest hit on internal accounts. We probably spend I would say two hundred thousand dollars a year, two fifty a year on sports, um, and clubs. So if they come back, I mean, and the fact that you only let us spend money on remote learning, and now we came back and you didn't give me any mus money for buses that I need or to replace equipment that we may have used. See, they're not, and, and I'm not going to go back out there and say, oh, by the way, we're back now. Can you add one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to your fees? That's not going to happen. So that would be the only um, the only negative I see. But I feel like our internal accounts, like I said, we have seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars in there right now. Even if we took out two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, there would still be a buffer in there that if we did come back, we could make it through the year. So I'm, I'm I am I am a squirrel as far as you know the, the money goes, and so I don't think anything's going to cripple us at all. But, but, but that's, a, that's a fair question. Any additional questions? If I could just revisit this whole social worker case manager, you yeah. know, I know we'd like more, but I almost feel, and I, I'm naive to this. It, it, is there like a magic number, like how many kids per one social worker or how many kids per case manager? I, I don't know that. No. Miss Devine is on right now. I know she knows it for the counselors. Miss Devine, if you can hear me, do you know what it is for for what the recommended one for our for social workers is? The same as counseling. It's the recommended national standard is one social worker for two hundred and fifty students. Wow. Same as counseling. Yeah. Um, I yeah. Didn't realize it was and what's the difference number. between? Ms. Devine, a social worker and a case manager, forgive my ignorance. No, that's a great question. Thanks for asking. We just did this lesson with the students, so great question. <laughs> um, a social worker at le in CPS, a social worker, their first order of business is to service students with 504 plans and IEP plans who have legal minutes with a social worker. 
pretty much takes up, you know, mostly our social workers time at each campus. Uh, and then a case manager, and we have one at TFA and there are two at varsity work to organize and Ms. Cobb's a major part of that as well, organize and run the 504 and IEP meetings and keep them within law and all of those kinds of things. And then counselors, which there are 10 of us, we each have a caseload 400 or so. Um, and then we're, we work with academic, social, emotional and college and career, but we don't do like therapy, like a social worker does like 30 minutes a week of therapy. We do check-ins, we do the classroom lessons and all of those. So the, the need for another social worker is more for that kind of therapeutic piece for the students who do not have 504 plans and IEPs and even some who do because there's just so many. Um, so I hope that answers your question. It does. And with the new additions to the TAF family, um, they're diverse learners. They need more of a, a social worker, case manager, or counselor, or all of the above? All of the above. All of the above. That's a great question. So the case manager will work with them once to twice a year in meetings. Social worker could have 15, 30 minutes a week, a month, bi biweekly. And then um, counselors were tasked uh, tier one, meaning we work with all of the kids all of, the, all of the time and all of their needs. So it definitely affects all of that, the mental health and academic health, for sure. I almost feel, Principal G, that we need to figure out how within our budget to figure out how to get at least one more social worker somewhere, somewhere. Yeah. I, I don't think I, I that's unreasonable. And especially with what we just went through with the whole police and school and all that stuff and the need yeah. mm -hmm. for our kids to have this level of you know social emotional interaction that they're not getting i i think we need to as as a body do a you know fully however we whatever we can do to try to get another social worker on our team i i agree wholeheartedly mr gusso and and just to show you how the, the ripple effect of this is that the fact that we don't have another social worker or two social workers or three, the burden gets a lot of times put on our counselors who are already overworked because they're supposed to be at 250. And, and I'm trying to toe the line with a budget and just giving them 400. And I'm like, I got to give you 400. That's what my budget is. And so they're already overworked. And Karen knows I've had kids in my office that probably need a social worker immediately. And I would say, Karen, get to my office. And now she's doing double duty right. as being like a, a social worker and, and, and trying to, to work with these kids. So it, it's a ripple effect, not just that we need social workers, but the fact that other people are stepping forward, doing as good a job as they can with social work. So that, that, is, a, that is a concern. Now, couple that with the fact that I believe, I believe a couple of years from now, they're gonna look back and say, you know what, the loss of learning over COVID, not a big deal. But what really hit our kids was the social emotional. And I really think that that's gonna come bubbling up in a couple of years, that if we're not ready for that, we're gonna put a, a large portion of our generation. I just saw a stat the other day that uh, it was kids that feel depressed from like uh, 1977 to 2014, it held steady at about 6% boys and girls. Since 2014, girls have gone up to 22% right now. And, and a lot of it has to, I think has to do with social, um, you know, the social networking and all that other stuff. But so I, those are the facts. And so what are we doing about it? Are we still gonna hold steady to that number or, so I'm, I'm with you, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm putting flames on your fire already. Yeah. Uh, and Karen so knows, Karen and I, Karen is the biggest advocate for that. So, she so knows. what do we, how do we, what do we do? How do we petition for one more social worker? Oh. How do we start looking at our budget and make, maybe we don't buy, get the sprinkler system. I mean, if our grass yeah. dies, our grass dies at the Freshman Academy with all due respect, you know, it'll come back. We have to make tough decisions because, I know. you know, what we said in those series of meetings you know, where we no, all wholeheartedly no. said we want security in our schools, but we also all stood and said, 
we have to do something about the social emotional issue that's plaguing all of our kids throughout the city. Yeah, I agree. Obviously, we need to focus on TAF, but I don't think trying to figure out how to bring one additional social worker in in our budget is unreasonable. I think we should. No, be I don't. I don't think so too. Step, but you know, to be but, this. Go ahead, Chris. I think we should be taking a proactive step in trying to. I, not that I think we can get ahead of all of the things that were, you know, what's going on in the world, but whatever we can be doing to be proactive about it and start to, I'd like us to, like Mrs. Russo said, figure out how we're going to start fostering this relationship between police or security in the school and teachers and students and different races and everything else that came up along the way this year to help with them speak for themselves let's you know forget all of what of our opinions and all that other stuff which is we're, we're dealing in facts and data but our numbers are our numbers you cannot ignore that and we're not asking for the sun the stars and the moon we're asking for for scraps at this point and if we could get one more social worker who knows that would maybe maybe help miss divine get to 380 students instead of 400 which is still better than 400 so I, my ask, Mr. G, is I just don't know what we do with our budget to really be strategic in figuring out how to get this position on the book sooner rather than later. And well, some tough decisions are going to have to be made. Freaking up on me. Go ahead, Kathy. I just want to clarify too, if my math is correct, I heard you, uh, Ms. Devine, say we have ten counselors and three social workers for a total of thirteen people. And if the ratio is supposed to be 250, that would mean like 16 bodies, or would that be in a like 16 social workers and 16 counselors? Oh, that's a great question. So it's 250 for because we have different roles per counselor, and then 250 also per social worker. So um, if we were at Nutrier and Mr. G visited, they probably they have about 27 social workers and 27 counselors. So we're like short, if we would need like 32 to <laughs> yeah, be but ideal. That's a great question. That's a great question. Have we done a plan, Ms. Devine, of in, in, if we're following the numbers, what's the mm -hmm. breakdown for TAF? Like, do we know yeah, that idea? number? Do we know what the, the number is? Well, we each have four, you mean how many we should have? Yes. Yes. Based on our school numbers. Have I'll we do it real quick, it? but um right now yeah i'll do it real quick i just used four thousand as a round number yeah so we should have 16 counselors and 16 social workers wow but so and then just to like and i really appreciate you all you know talking about this and advocating i really do um the the role is very separate too but we work together we're on the behavioral health team at TFA, we've kind of become like a lot of, we're so, almost social workers at TFA, the three counselors and then uh, Ms. Powitz. Um, as you know, like the seventh through ninth grade kids uh, need a lot, especially now, but even before. Um, but our role is different. We're also helping them plan their courses, college, even college planning, seventh through ninth. Um, so we're tier one, we're kind of everybody. And then the social worker, are really tasked with uh, the therapeutic, the very deep therapeutic aspect, which is I think what you're calling for. And, and Mr. G gave, you know, we got one more counselor this year. Mr. Duarte came over to be with us. So we appreciate that. Like, obviously we always want more. I think the social worker piece, at least now is key um, to have, to alleviate the varsity campus load. And then even we have a couple of subcontract uh, Lutheran social service social workers who come in, they bill insurance if there's any insurance, but we, we wanna be the CPS employees who work with our kids who get to know those kids uh, on a daily basis as well. Okay, not to be a pain. Thank you so, for this conversation. So 16 and 16, and what's, what do we current, we have three? How many do we have in total now? We have, I think it's, is it two, Mark? I mean, we have two plus an extern. She's we, we originally had, we originally had 1.4.
which is one count, one social worker, and then three days a week. And we said, guys, this is ridiculous. And they hit us with, there's some schools without a, without a social worker. I'm like, that's not my problem. I don't, I don't care about the other schools. I'm telling you, I can't have, you know, two days a week at one of my campuses, uh, nobody, nobody get emotionally sick, please. You know, it doesn't work that way. So we got two right now. So yeah, we have two and then yeah. like an intern and then counseling, we have 10 and a few um, interns, like graduate students. Yeah. You know, the, the, you, want, you want a quick answer? Raise the fees when we come back to $500, you know, and then we got more money we could pay it internally. That's, you know, I know Gordon's shaking his head, but tell me where else I'm gonna get that money. What, the reality of it, I, I live in reality. The reality of, and this is not a slam on my teachers because I love my teachers and they're hard workers, but we have a veteran teacher force, which means they've been here a while, which means they're expensive. But with that expense, I, I get quality and I get good people that have been doing this a while. So there is that caught, you know, that, that ancillary benefit that they're all good at what they do, but that comes with a cost. I, I don't have a school filled with one and two year teachers and then they leave to go somewhere else and I can fill them with one or two year teachers. We have teachers here that are making a, a, a lot of money, which they deserve and please understand that, but it is expensive. So I don't have a lot of money left over in these 115 funds where I could normally buy um, that. You know, um, Lane Tech um, has their fees at $500. They did not lower their fees. They also have, an, uh, with that, they have an appeal going out to everybody and everybody is expected to pay an additional $500. So I know you're, everybody's throwing their eyes up, you know, Gordon, I should say, not everybody, but the 50 extra dollars, you know, Lane Tech is charging a thousand, you know, now you're only expected to pay 500 of that, but you know, you pay for what you get. And, and that would be the, the best way I would say that we get money uh, for that. The other way that we get money is, is to do is, to, you know, you either raise money or you save on expenses. So one of the ways we save on expenses is like buying those two buses. Those two buses are gonna cost us $110,000. Whoa, we should buy a social worker with that. No, we shouldn't. Cause I'm gonna argue that that $110,000 when every year those buses are gonna save us $60,000 a year. So add that up. So every year we have those buses is buying us a half a, half a social worker every year. Um, so those are the two ways that you can afford a, a, a social worker now. Okay, well, we're coming up on the end of the meeting time here. Okay. And this discussion okay. kind of let go. So what I would like to see is going forward, like when we come back, when you come back to us with all of the capital projects that we used, you know, yeah. we're thinking of spending the money on, I'd also like to see a cost on a social worker. And mm -hmm. I, think, okay. I think that we then should have this discussion again and see maybe yeah. we don't get the trees this time and we do invest. And I'm totally for the van and I understand, you know, budgeting, yeah. how to look at this over the next couple of years. So keep that on the forefront of everybody's mind too. Is, understand. You know, understand. not just this year, but what we need for the next yeah. couple of years and what's going to set us up for the best. Yeah, I understand. And that else? also brings up uh, friends of Taft, it, you know, I know yeah. it, it's COVID. So uh, I don't know how you ask people for money at this point, but, um, you know, we were, we were get poised to kind of start that this year and so I know that'll be a huge help too, if we can get that off the ground. Yep. Any other questions relating to the budget? No, I appreciate your suggestion, Chrissy, because you know I don't even know what like numbers to be looking at right now. Like what all in gross, what's a social worker gonna cost us versus our you know wish facilities, not only wish list, but necessity list of things that we need to maintain our facilities to keep them safe for our, our our family. So um, having that analysis, Principal G, I think will be helpful in us as we look at the budget and we can be more pointed. Yeah, I understand that. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? What's going on in the chat? Oh, I think those are just some old ones. I can see them. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to kill the recording for the budget and then start it back up at 630. Take care, everybody. Take care, everybody. Two down.